Hi, this is No Coast from Make Noise, and it brings together quite a few interesting synthesis ideas into a very small package. People think of semi-modular synths as a gateway into Eurorack. I see this as sort of like the other way around. Condensing a few greatest hits from Eurorack into a more accessible form. In this video, I'll show you a few interesting no coast hacks like playing it paraphonically and even playing three note chords. So if you're familiar with no coast, feel free to skip ahead to the hacks section using the timeline on the left. For the complete beginner, No Coast looks a little bit intimidating at first, and indeed, you can do complex things with it, but the basics are quite simple. If you just look at how it's pre-wired, without changing anything, it's actually quite easy. It has a simple oscillator with a timbre control section to add harmonics and make it more interesting, and then it has two envelopes, one routed by default to change the harmonics over time, and another routed by default to change the amp level over time. But as we dive a little deeper, that's where it starts to get a lot more interesting. You see, what No Coast really is, is sort of like seven Eurorack modules pre-wired together. A MIDI to CV module, this module converts MIDI note and modulation data to control voltage and gate signals, and also has a built-in arpeggiator and LFO capabilities. A utilities module with a clock, clock divider, sample and hold source of randomness, and a mixer, attenuverter, and mult section. An oscillator module that outputs two waveforms, triangle and square, with linear FM control and a big pitch control knob. A waveform mangler module, now I know that's not the official name, but this basically processes sound in two steps, an overtone step and a multiply step. The first overtone step takes three waveforms, two from the oscillator and one if you loop the AD slope envelope and mixes them together. And then the second portion, the multiply portion, takes the output of the overtone section and multiplies it sort of like resonance on a filter emphasizing different harmonics but more sharp and aggressive. So let's start with the overtone section. It starts with this and then gradually morphs into something like this and the multiply section takes whatever this feeds out and slowly goes through the harmonics changing the waveform as you can see on the scope based on what it's fed and just to take a quick look at the two envelopes the contour envelope is a simple adsr style envelope but has uh, a decay stage to represent both decay and release. Let's take a look at this on the scope. I'll add the onset or attack, change its slope, do same thing with decay, which we can only see if we reduce the sustain. So you can see on the scope a classic ADSR style envelope. I'll set up the slope envelope to be triggered by the gate so we can have a look at it as well. Let's start with linear and with times that you can see, say here. Okay, linear means it goes up and down in a straight line. Exponential looks sort of like a slide. Up and a slide down. And then logarithmic is the other way around. It's kind of like a dome-shaped curve. And then finally, the seventh and last virtual module is a mixer and low pass gate module. The mixer section lets you mix the output of the overtone and multiple module and the core oscillator or anything else you wanna plug into here. So for example, I'll take the square wave output of the oscillator and plug it into here. So now rather than mixing the triangle wave and the overtone generator, we're mixing the square wave and the overtone generator. And then the low pass gate is basically a combination of a VCA, a voltage controlled amplifier, with a twist in that it also has a built in subtle low pass filter. So this not only controls level, but also harmonics, right? We're not just lowering 
this square wave were also dramatically changing its brightness and its shape, especially as we go higher clockwise. So those are the seven core sections or modules of No Coast, and as you can probably tell, No Coast is a semi-modular synth, which means that we can disconnect existing connections and create new internal ones. Jacks with a white outline or round outline or an arrow going in, like this one, are inputs, and then all the others with the arrow going out are outputs. The gold lines represent existing connections, so if I want to disconnect a connection going into something, let's say, for example, if I wanted to disable the contour envelope, all I'd need to do is plug a jack into the gate, and now it's no longer functioning. I could then use my gate to trigger the slope envelope, and then use the slope envelope to control my dynamics, or VCA, or level, instead of this one. And then I could use this module now to control something else. So that's what No Coast does from a bird's eye view. Now let's dive in a little bit and see what it can do that you may not be aware of. So while it may seem like No Coast is a one oscillator synth, it can actually create between two to three additional controllable notes. Let's start with the simplest and most obvious one, the slope, which has a cycle button and can pretty easily be brought to audio rates. I'll start by lowering the pitch of the main oscillator and I'll do it to an extreme so much so that we won't hear it at all by offsetting this control voltage all the way down. So now it's basically a really slow LFO. And now we can focus just on the slope. So if I take the slope output and plug it into here so that we can hear it and then start cycling it and I'll just use this key to open the gate. Right, so as long as this is moving slowly, we can't hear it, but as I increase its rate, we can get a tone out of this. So I could tune this to a drone at a frequency that I want. Let's say right here. And now I can bring back and tune my main oscillator. Fine pitch tune here if I want. And I can set the tone of the main oscillator here and the balance between the two like this. Okay, cool. So that's step one. I've got two oscillators at the same time playing paraphonically, one droning a single note and another I can control with the keyboard. Now I patched it this way so that we can hear each tone independently, but I don't have to. I can also use the overtone control to gradually bring the slope oscillator in. It's just that this way, the only way that I can hear the slope is if I'm on sort of this side of the um, overtone knob. The reason we can hear the slope without patching it into the balance input is because, like I mentioned before, by default it's also routed into the overtone section and heard especially as we twist the knob in this direction. Okay, great, so I have two tones. I can tune the slope to whatever fixed note I want and then play on top of it with the main oscillator, but what if I want to control both? Well, it turns out that you can, in a limited way, across one or two octaves, depending on your sensitivity to pitch variations, play the slope as well. Now, since the slope's default routing is also into the multiply control, I want to disable that by taking a little dummy cable and plugging it into here so it won't interfere with whatever the main oscillator is doing. Now, it shouldn't as long as this knob is set to the middle, but I don't want to take a chance on it being slightly to the left or to the right. I'll get the main oscillator out of the way for a bit, just like we did before, just so that I can set this up. I've got the slope cycle on. And again, I'll connect the slope to the balance input so that I can hear just it. Now for this trick to work, I've plugged a cable to the pitch output of the key step because it has a CV out. And I'm going to plug that in to the time control of the slope. Now here it's really a matter of fine tuning and finessing knob positions to make sure that this works. And what I'm going for 
is basically having this range represent an octave, and I'm not shy about using a tuner for this. So the way this works is you can see that as I go up, this represents less than an octave, and as I go down here, this represents more than an octave. So you just need to find the sweet spot where this is more or less an octave. And if you're a tuning perfectionist, this might take a while, but if not, it works. So now again, I can bring back the main oscillator. Now you can change the relative octave, of course, as you like. And I'm not tuning this to C, as you can see but it's good enough for me. And I hope you don't mind if I add a little reverb for this. Now I can play them together individually, so let me show you how. Let's hear just the main oscillator. And there's an arpeggiator built in here, so I can program a, let's say, this line here. Right? Then unplug this and just play the slope oscillator with control voltage, right? So I had MIDI controlling the main oscillator and now CV controlling the secondary slope. Okay, so that's one nice way of using the slope as a second tone generator. Let's look at another one. So if you've seen my Make Noise Maths videos, and actually Make Noise have sort of bundled a little mini maths in here, you know that you can use the slope or contour generators to generate subharmonics. What are subharmonics? Well, basically they're subdivisions of the frequency of the main oscillator, and these can be as simple as a sub oscillator, an octave or two below the main oscillator, but it can get quite more interesting with uneven subdivisions. So I'm keeping my dummy cable in here because I don't want the slope to mess with this, and I'm gonna turn off the cycle. We don't need that for this setup. And then turning the slope into a subharmonic oscillator is actually quite simple. All I need to do is take the square output of the main oscillator and plug it into the trigger of the slope. Now again, just to make this easier to hear, I'll take the slope output, plug it into the balance input, and then turn this all the way left. Now, as long as I have my slope rise and fall set all the way to the left counterclockwise, as short as possible, and the slope curve set all the way to the right to exponential, the pitch of the slope oscillator will be just like the main oscillator, right? They just move together. But if I use the rise and fall to gradually slow down the slope, right now it's playing an octave below the main oscillator. If I keep going, this is an F, an octave and a half below, two octaves below, and these are interesting subharmonics on the way down. Now I'll show you a better method in a bit, but this method does have some imperfections. So these will move together for some notes, right? We have a nice sub oscillator. 
but at some frequencies it won't, and it requires some adjustment. So there were interesting surprises along the way. But the nice thing is that these subharmonics are always somehow related to the main tone you're playing. Now if I really wanted, I could use the contour slope for another subharmonic. So all I need to do is just take a stackable cable, plug it in here, and then trigger the contour envelope as well. Now, this will also trigger the VCA, so I can get that out of the way by using the keyboard gate to control dynamics. Now I can do the same thing here, move this to exponential, shorten the rise and onset. Then the last thing I need is obviously to hear the contour, so for that I'll use the mixer over here, go from the contour into the mixer, and then finally into the balance input. So quite a mess, but if all goes well, I have another subharmonic right here, right? That is quite a chord right there. Three oscillators. But there's actually even a better way to create subharmonics on the No Coast. Let's clear this up. Well, it turns out that No Coast has a built in clock divider in its utilities section. Any clock or tempo that you bring into this input can be then subdivided out this output. The slight challenge is you can only apply these clock divisions with a MIDI CC message. Now I've gone ahead and mapped the mod wheel to MIDI CC 116, which is what No Coast is expecting in order to know which clock division to apply. Now for this to work, for No Coast to accept these CC messages, you've got to turn on the program mode, and this should be enough. And now just as before, I'll take the square wave output, use it as sort of like a fake clock to the tempo input. And then for starters, plug this clock into the balance input. And now let's take a listen. This is my main frequency. And then if I do this, you can hear that it's subdivided into subharmonics. Now this waveform is kind of tinny, but I could still use it to trigger the slope contour generator and make a much more interesting waveform. So now I'll take the slope, plug it into the balance input, and... Yeah, this is much better. I've found that this is a more stable way to produce subharmonics, especially if you keep your slope short and sweet. You can cycle through them and not miss anything. So now, I can bring back my main oscillator and play them both. And if you've got a MIDI CC sequencer, you can sort of sequence these as you play whatever you play with a main oscillator, and it can make some pretty interesting sequences. Okay, let's see what else is hiding inside of No Coast. Now, earlier I told you that the Contour Mini Eurorack module is an ADSR envelope generator that gets triggered by a gate. But the similarities between Make Noises Math module and No Coast got me thinking that there might be more here that meets the eye, and indeed it turns out that there's a slew limiter accessible inside the contour envelope, because the gate input 
really isn't a gate input that accepts only on off messages like the trig input in the slope, but rather you can use the contour envelope to slew or slow down voltage changes in the gate input. Now the big deal here isn't that envelopes work using slew limiters, but the fact that there is an accessible one that you can use inside here. So I plugged a CV cable out the mod output of the key step. So now I'm controlling voltage through this cable using this mod strip and I'll plug it into the gate input. Now, because we're using the gate as a slew limiter, I'll have to use a different gate to control what we hear. And I wanna get this on the scope so you can see what I mean. I've got the contour output of this mini module going out to the scope. And if I take my rise or onset all the way down and decay all the way down and sustain all the way up and then this to exponential, if you look at the scope, you'll see that as I tap in different places on this mod strip, I get different voltage levels on the scope. I can move my finger gradually, of course, but the point here is rather to show what happens when I make really sharp changes. So what a slew limiter does is basically slow down changes in voltage. The onset slows down voltage going up and the decay slows down voltage going down. So if I wanted to slow down whatever voltage changes are going up, I would just turn on the onset. You can see that I'll increase the onset even more. Right, so you can see a slow linear ramp up and I can make this exponential to give it a curve. I could do the same thing going on the way down as well by turning up the decay. And now we're going slow on the way up and slow on the way down. So let's take a look at a few things we can do with this. The first thing we can use this for is as an envelope follower. You can plug in any audio you want into the gate and then use the onset and decay to smooth out the audio rate changes and then apply the contour to any modulatable parameter that you want. So I'll take the clock here and plug it into a little drum module I have off camera. And if I take this audio out so that we can hear it, I'll plug it into here. Right, little kick drum, and I don't need the reverb anymore. I'll turn that off. Right, so this is what I have coming in this input. And I'll take this audio out and plug it into the gate. And you can see it's already generating signals on the scope and then I can shape them any way I want to create the envelope I want or the effect I'm trying to get. And we can hear this as well if we want. I could slow it down if I wanted. Right. Now I could, for example, use that as side chain. Now in order to do that, I've got to flip this uh, waveform on its head. So I'll take the contour out and rather than plug it into the scope, I'll plug it into the mixer here. And I've got an attenuverter here so I can take it from where it's at originally. So now I'll take the output of the mixer here to my scope, right? I want to invert my envelope follower signal. And I also want to bring it up a bit. So I'll take this gate, plug it into here. And then when I press a key, right, you can see I can have a positive gate that I can apply now to any parameter that I want. And what I want to do now is take the output of the math that I did here and apply it to my dynamics. And if I bring up my main oscillator, I have basically now applied a side chain based on the kick, and I can change its character by messing around with the contour parameters. So that's how you create sidechain using the slew limiter inside NoCoast. Now there's one more cool use I wanted to show you for the slew limiter, but before that, one small thing. Now we talked about this before, the NoCoast has a square wave oscillator built in, and it's quite nice and all, but you can't change its pulse width. 
or can you? If you take the square output with a stackable cable or you can use any other mult technique and plug it into the linear FM input, well, you can have a square wave, but also any pulse width you want in between. Now this kind of messes with the pitch at some point, but it works quite nicely. So I hear you say, you've got pulse width. What about pulse width modulation for a nice thick fat bass? Well, you could, you uh, would just need a LFO and you can use the one built in here, hook that up to a VCA in this path and you'd get a form of pulse width modulation. It would change the pitch if you do it too much, but if you keep the range subtle, It'll work quite nicely. Now I won't show that now because I think the No Coast is worthy of another video pairing it with other modules. If you want to see that, hit me up in the comments section below and I'll do that. I did want to discuss one small tip before I go on to the grand finale. You can use this LED here as a scope for either positive or negative voltages if you don't know what a certain voltage output is doing. So for example, these CV and gate outputs are configurable. I've got this one set up as an LFO and this one set up as a gate. But if you're not too sure what they do, just plug them into the input here and you can see the LFO impact here or the gate impact here. Just a nice tip on checking out what voltage is going through the system. Okay, so for the grand finale, I need the Krell patch from the manual. This seemed to work before, so let's try it. So at low pitches, it could sound like this. And at higher pitches, sort of like birds. But I want to go for R2-D2. The way this mini Krell patch work is that every cycle of the slope, the randomness gets triggered and the time or the speed of the cycle changes, and it also changes the level of the output as well. Now the problem with this Krell patch, if you're trying to imitate R2-D2, is that the output of the randomness generator is very sharp, right? Every time it changes its voltage, it does that in a very quick step. Luckily, as we learned before, we have a slew limiter here. So if I were to take that output and pass it through my newly discovered slew limiter and only then bring that back into the mix here and make sure that R2 only spoke when I told him using the keyboard and then adjusted the pitch and rate to taste. And then finally, I don't need this here, so we can take this out. What's that, R2? Whoa, 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 the video hasn't been going on for that long. Okay, I'll wrap it up. So those are my hacks for No Coast for now. If you like these kinds of things, there are way more of them in my constantly updated book of electronic music ideas, tips and tricks offered to people who support this channel on Patreon. Feel free to ask me any questions you want in the comment section below. Hit like if you learned something and click subscribe and ring the little notification bell to make sure you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching.